Hello everybody, starting from this video we're going to learn chapter 4 and uh, basically we're going to review a lot of the uh, probability uh, concept however we're going to um, uh, introduce a lot of business uh, cases that to show you how the probability will help business decision maker to figure out the uncertain uh, business world and help them to make a better decision and so in this chapter and uh, you will see a lot of familiar concept like the union of the two event uh, the intersection of the two events, uh, the complementary uh, of the event. And so don't get bored. And so we just build a foundation. So the most important concept and you have to uh, keep in your mind is called the Bayesian theory. So Bayesian theory. So this is a very, very important theory uh, to apply in the business world because it's allow you to keep updating the probability given the new information coming in. To help you to understand uh, what does this mean in the business world. So uh, when you invest in a, a, a stock and you're trying to uh, use the historical data to forecasting uh, the potential uh, potential uh, chance for this stock going higher than current price, so you're using historical data to predict it. And so let's say you have 70% chance to believe the stock goes up, but suddenly you heard the news. So we had a trade war happening. So this company actually had a lot of business partner uh, uh, globe, and but we had a trade war. So obviously it should updating uh, the current probability that uh, the stock price can go up tomorrow because this uh, new event happened. So how can we update in this, uh, the older probability 70% that is using the Bayesian theory. So you can see the uh, the new probability you calculate can become old probability again because the new information might come in and then you can keep updating, updating. So this is kind of like a dynamic probability. So this is very, very useful. And so this is a uh, uh, lot of uh, uh, fashion term called uh, um, the machine learning, artificial intelligence, and new method to forecasting. So many of those are based on this kind of very basic statistic theory called Bayesian theory. And so hopefully you will learn that concept well. And so for our exam, I also will focus on Bayesian theory. Now, although your homework will practice on all the probability theories uh, in the exam, I will focus on the Bayesian theory. So let's look at our first, uh, the chapter four for uh, what we're gonna look at will be the uh, basic concept related to the probability. So chapter four, introduction of the probability. And what we're gonna learn in this part, including the, what is called experiment and what is the counting rule and how we are assigning the probability uh, if we know on the event. And now we're gonna look at event and their probability. And then we're going to look at some basic relationship of the probability. And uh, then we're going to move on to the conditional probability. Lastly, we're going to uh, show using the Bayesian theory. So why we put the Bayesian theory at the end? Because it's actually using a lot of the uh, basic relationship of probability and the condition probability to derive this new theory called the Bayesian theory. So Bayesian theory is probably used in the business world. And so let's look at what is the experiment and accounting rule and event and their probability. So why the probability is so important for the business world? It is really because the manager often fits their decision on analysis of uncertainties, such as the following situation. So what are the chance that the sale will decrease if we increase prices? What is the likelihood a new assembly method will increase productivity? What are the odds that a new investment will be profitable? So you can see I uh, highlighted three words, uh, three words in the this three scenario: chance, likelihood, and odds. So they, although they're different English words, uh, they all can be quantified by using probability. So basically, all three questions are asking for probability. What are the probability that the sales will decrease if we increase prices? What is the probability a new assembly method will increase productivity? And what is the probability that a new investment will be profitable? So in the business world, so some people are want to run in the business. Some the people, they feel very excited because there are so many uncertainties. And when you make a decision, uh, it's not gambling. You are literally using your knowledge to bid on the scenario have a high chance to happen, so high probability to happen. So therefore, uh, in the most of business decision, especially nowadays, we have uh, so many data available, is a data-driven decision making. And then you have to understand what is the meaning of the probability. As I said, you already learned the step 260 before, and so when we talk about probability, 
and many of the basic concepts you should be uh, able to understand. Before I uh, refresh your memory, I want to give you two probability, and you can tell me what do you feel. So let's see, you have 98% chance to get A in your uh, second exams. What do you feel? You must be feel very excited, right? You have 98% chance to get A. That means you have very, very high chance to get it, so you know you are very likely to get A. So how about another scenario? So you have a 1% chance uh, to win the lottery today. Were you going to buy the lottery? You're going to tell me, no, I'm not going to waste my dollar. It seems like you already know 1% 1, 1 chance to get a lottery, uh, to win the lottery. Why waste my money? So because the 1% is very close to zero, you know this scenario is very unlikely to happen. And some of you guys might just say, ah, I don't want to waste my money. But don't, even given that, we still see a lot of people want to buy the lottery because uh, the people want to take a chance. So even 1%, they still want to take that 1% chance. Especially if you only spend on one dollar, right? So uh, obviously, you understand the relationship between that number called the probability wave occurrence of the event, and then you should know what is the probability means. So the probability is a numerical measure of the likelihood that an event will occur. So when the probability value are always between zero and one, it can be zero, it can be one, but it cannot be smaller than zero or larger than one. They're always between zero and one. And then the problem near zero indicate the event is quite unlikely to occur. The problem near one indicate the event is almost certain to occur. So please don't mem don't try to remember it. You just try to understand it. Of course, you learn so many. Uh, you already learn one statistic class at least. So you should um, already have this basic, basic idea about the relationship between occurrence of event and the probability. So this graph to summarize what I just mentioned. Close to zero, very unlikely. Close to one, very likely. And a close to 0 0.5, that is, uh, as um, it is just as likely as just is unlikely. Basically, a half half chance to happen, right? So that's the relationship between this number called probability and the current event. Next, we're going to look at an experiment. So an experiment is any process that generates well-defined outcomes. Please don't try to memorize the definition. I want you to understand the definition. So the key word here is well-defined outcome. Okay. So uh, how I how I help you to understand well-defined outcome? Let's say uh, if I say toss a coin, is that a experiment? Some students might say yes. Some students say no. So the answer is no. Remember, experiment has to be have a well-defined outcome. If I just talk about tossing coin, you know, we can have so many different kinds of outcomes. So somebody say, oh, head or tail. No, I didn't see how many times I tossed a coin, right? I can toss once, twice, three times. The outcome will be different. So if I said toss the coin once, that will be considered as experiment because the outcome will be either head or tail. However, if I said, uh, also, if I said the experiment, uh, uh, let's toss the coin twice, that is also considered as a well-defined outcome, we also considered as experiment, because we have well-defined outcome. It is either hat, hat, tail, tail, hat, tail, tail, hat. So you can define the outcome. Like I said, if you're just saying talk of tossing a coin, it is not experiment. Like I said, I didn't specify that once, twice, or three times, didn't talk about it, so you won't be able to find a well-defined outcome. Therefore, that will not be considered as an experiment. So after you understand the experiment, let's move on to the second point of the component. It's called a sample space. So the sample space for an experiment is a set of all experimental outcomes. So for instance, if I talk about tossing a coin once, once, remember? So then your outcome will be hat, tail, right? If I said, Toss a uh, 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 toss a coin, a uh, uh, flip. So uh, roll the die once. Roll the die once. So then the outcome will be one, two, three, four, five, and the six. Right? If I roll a fair die once, it will be one, two, three, four, five, and six. So these are my sample space. Okay, this is a sample space and this sample space. So you're gonna ask Dr. Jason why we are learning those things. 
The reason is because later we're going to learn how to assign the probability to the event you know, to, to the probability of the experiment outcomes and then we're actually going to be using those concepts what is sample space, okay? And the next concept is called a sample point. An experiment outcome is also called a sample point. So basically this hat is one sample point and the tail is another sample point. One is one sample point. Two is another sample point, etc. Okay, so each outcome that will be considered as a sample point. So here is more examples. If I toss a coin once, head or tail, well, I inspect a part, and the outcome will be defective, non defective. Uh, uh, conduct a sales call will be purchase, no purchase, roll or die once. One, two, three, four, five, six. Play a football game, the outcome will be win, lose, or tie. So those are considered the experiment and its corresponding sample space. So now let's look, look at a business case together. As I said, we're not learning basic uh, math or stats. We actually try to connect a business case. So during this whole chapter, we're going to look at this is called the Bradley investment. So we're looking at its investment strategy. And so let, we're going to use the example to learn different kinds of probabilities. So Bradley has invested in two stocks, market oil and coal mining. Bradley has determined that the possible outcome of this investment three months from now are as follows. So you can see this is his investment. So this uh, he invests on two stocks, Marco Oil and the Coin Mining, right? Marco Oil and the Coin Mining. So now we do see different outcome from each stock. Each stock. Before we move on to the next, I want to ask you how you define this experiment. Is this an experiment? Yeah, the answer is yes. So you have this guy invest on two stock, Mark Oil Coin Mining, and then we have well-defined outcome, right? Uh, Mark Oil have four possible outcome, 10, 5, 0, negative 20, coin mining 8, negative 2. However, I want to point out this is investment is not just about Mark Oil or just about coin mining. It is about this whole portfolio. So this whole portfolio have two stocks. Market oil and coin mining. Then I want to ask you, how many possible outcomes do we have here? Okay, so I'm still gonna say, uh, we have six. Four plus two equal to six. And some students say, uh, I have no idea. And some students say, I think it's eight. And so who is right? So if we are in the classroom, I will do a poll. So if not, I give you like a uh, two second think about it. Which one you will you chose? Six, eight, or I have no idea. If you chose eight, you are right. Why? Because remember, this is the portfolio. So how many possible outcomes you will have? So total eight. What are the eight? First, Mark Oil make ten dollars, ten thousand dollars. Coin money make eight thousand. Second. 10,000 lose 2,000. Then, third, make 5,000, make 8,000. And Mark Oil make 5,000, coin mining 2,000. So we already have four, right? And then uh, Mark Oil break even, coin mining make 8,000. Mark Oil break even, or coin mining lose 2,000. So now we have six already. So the last two will be Mark Oil lose 2,000, coin mining make 8,000. Mark Oil lose 20,000, uh, 20, coin mining lose 2,000. So we totally have eight. So uh, after you follow my explanation, you say, oh, I, okay, I see. So for this portfolio, we have eight possible outcomes. Some of you guys might ask me, hey, Dr. J, how about I have uh, holding three stocks? So usually, who just holding two stocks? How about I have three stocks, four stocks, five stocks? Is there any easy way for me to help me to understand what would be the possible outcome for this portfolio? The answer is yes. So that's what we're going to look at next. It's called a multiple step accounting rule. So multiple step accounting rule. So I will show you the theory and then I will show you the example which make it the whole theory easier to understand. So don't be scared about the notation here. Again, I will show you the example. So if an experiment consists of a sequence of K steps in which there are N1 possible result for the first step, N2 possible result for the second step and so on, then the total number of experimental outcome is given by N1 times N2 times the last NK. And so what does that mean? 
So let's look at the Bradley oil together. So that will help you to look, think about this case. So the Bradley investment. So we can think about he owned two stock. Actually, it can be considered as a two experiment step. So they're owning market oil and then owning coin mining, right? So we have two steps, two steps. So basically, uh, the K here equal to two. K here equal to two. And then we're going to look at what is the first step, how many possible outcomes we have in the first step, and how many uh, possible steps we have second step. And then one by them together, we will be able to get how many uh, outcomes we will have from this portfolio. So in the first step, we have four possible outcomes, right? If you don't remember, if you go back, so four possible steps, uh, outcome. In the second step, I have two possible outcomes. Oops. And therefore, four times two equal to eight. Okay, so we have eight possible outcomes. So if you haven't, still not get it, let me give you another example. Look at this Excel. Uh, it's easier for us to calculate. So think about uh, if you go to grocery store and you will notice that uh, the cereal. I love cereal and uh, my kids love cereal. And I noticed some cereal brand actually includes some toys in the box, some uh, toys in the box. And so later I will share a video with you and you can see what are they. And so uh, there is a reason I visited the grocery store. I saw the, the one box had the Minion. So from the Despicable Me, the cartoon. I know that's for kids, but I actually really like the Minion. And so I know uh, recently uh, McDonald also started to give the Minion toy. And I really liked it. I tried to collect all of them and I used my kids as an excuse. So let, uh, in the next video, we'll see how many different kind of Minion they have. They actually have seven different kind of Minion. Uh, in uh, seven different types of mi minion in each box. So different box will have different minion, but sometimes they might have the same. And so I want to say that's a very smart marketing uh, method. Why? Because when the kids look at, oh, we have seven different kind of minion I can collect. So let me just collect all seven, right? So they never learn a statistic, especially for very young kids. They would say, oh, they're begging their parents, please buy seven box cereal for me. I just want to get seven different minions and then on your backs, okay, I'll just buy for you. But uh, if you know the statistic, the chance for the kids to get the seven different minions will be very, very low, right? So let's hear, we are using the multiplication counting rule to help us to understand if we do buy seven box different cereals. And so we, ha we have, we are collecting different toys from the box. And so how many possible outcomes we will have from this seven box of the cereal? So if you think about counting rule, so if we buy seven box of the cereal, so the number of the step will equal to seven, right? Number of the step will equal to seven. So now we're going to figure out for each step, how many possible outcomes do we have? So we're going to buy seven box, then we'll have N1, N2, N3, oops, N3, N4, N5, N6, N7, right? We have seven different box. So think about, for first box you open up, before you open up, how many possible toys you can have? How many, pos uh, how many different, uh, how, how many possible uh, toy you might have. So you have seven different, you might have one of the seven toys, right? Seven possible outcome you might have. How about the seven, second box? Seven. Third, seven. So basically, for all seven box, you might, you will have seven possible outcomes. So for this experiment, you buy seven box. For each step, you have seven possible outcomes. So in total, you will have how many possible outcomes? So that is seven power by seven, right? Based on the accounting rule. So we will have 823,543 possible outcome you will have from these seven different box. So in the, to have seven different minions, seven different toys, that will be just one out of 823,543 possible outcomes. So the chance Let me increase in the decimal, please. Format C. 
Let me keep 10 decimal places. So the chance for you to get seven different minions from seven different boxes will be 0.00000012143. That basically means it's almost unlikely. The chance is very, very low. But if you think about it, since this is a marketing strategy, so for the kids, they say, oh, I got seven. I didn't really get exact different uh, minion. Let me just collect more. So they're going to go back to store, back in the parent to buy more box. But we know uh, the chance is rare to get seven different minion. Okay. So this is the application of our accounting rule. Uh, to the marketing world and the uh, and the finance world, but obviously there were so many other world as so many other application business world as well. So just keep in mind how you figure out uh, the possible outcome from the experiment involving multiple steps. Okay, so that's how we can quickly get an outcome for this experiment. So obviously you can use a tree diagram to help you to uh, to understand how many possible outcome from the experiment. Uh, however, this won't be our focus. So we are focusing on using the accounting rule. But uh, uh, the reason is because in this scenario, the case is easy. We only have two stocks. And you definitely can draw a small uh, to tree diagram to figure out how many possible outcomes you will have. However, in the real world, like I said, you might have more than two stocks. Or for each stock, might have multiple more than four outcomes. So it's going to make your tree so big that you won't be able to able to quickly figure out the outcome. So please just using the multiple step accounting rule to help you to figure out how many possible outcomes you will have. And so uh, in next video we're going to look at will be how to assign the probability to the, uh, to, uh, to the outcomes and also what is the event, what is the event.